Welcome back, you crazy cats. Happy to have you guys back here today. Uh, today you're going to learn how to be able to differentiate the difference between distance and displacement. You'll be able to calculate the velocity, displacement, or time of an object. You'll be able to differentiate the difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity. You will also begin synthesis of kinematic equations. All right, so distance and speed, scalar quantities. Distance is the path length traveled from one location to another. It will vary depending upon the path. Distance is a scalar quantity. It is described only by magnitude. So in this case right here, they are showing us... Sorry. Um, the, to the distances. They're not necessarily giving us any um, direction. They're just giving us distance. So it's 48 kilometers or 30 miles from Podunk to State University. They're not telling us that it's east, all right? Uh, they're just giving us a direction. And then they're giving us a direction of 81 kilometers or 50 miles from hometown to State University. So again, these are distances because they're just, and scalar because they're just giving us a length or a magnitude, all right? That's that key word there. Magnitude is the number, all right? The 48 kilometers. Average speed is the distance traveled divided by the elapsed time. So what we have here then is average speed is the distance traveled divided by the total time to travel that distance. Some shorter ways of putting it here is the distance that you covered divided by the difference in time or the change in time. And that's why they have T2 minus T1. Um, it doesn't have to be zero. T1 doesn't have to be zero. You know, something it took us 30 seconds. Well, that'd be 30 minus zero is 30, but it could be 35 minus five. Maybe you took off at the five second mark and got done at the 35 second mark. So then you'd have 35 minus five, which would still be 30 seconds. And that would be the difference in the time. Since distance is scalar, speed is also a scalar, um, as is time. Instantaneous speed is the speed measured over a short time span. That This is what a speedometer reads. So um, this right here, instantaneous speed short time span so usually we're talking it's all relative but usually we're talking something around a second smaller than a second maybe a millisecond tenth of a second but very small time spans one dimensional displacement and velocity vector quantities the vector has both magnitude and direction manipulating vectors means defining a coordinate system as shown in the diagrams to the left so vector has magnitude and direction. All right, so now we're starting to difference between a vector and a scalar. So we were talking about scalar, now we're talking about vectors, which is also going to lead us into displacement. Displacement is a vector that points from initial position to the final position of an object. So notice on here that from the one meter mark to the nine meter mark, is a difference of eight meters. So we have a distance of eight meters. Down here, they're starting to use, the only thing they've added is this positive here, which told, told us that we went to the right, because our scale, the positive side, is getting more positive to the right. So this just became a displacement. This person, if they went from this classroom to the physics lab, they've walked a positive eight meters. This person would go negative eight meters. All right, she would go from 9 to 1, so she would have covered negative 8 meters. He's going to cover positive 8 meters. So we now have a, dis um, a displacement because you've gone, um, it's giving us a distance and a direction because we're indicating that this over here is positive and over here would be negative. Note that an object's um, position coordinate may be negative while its velocity may be positive. The two are independent of each other. So, um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. If not, we can talk about that more in class. One-dimensional displacement and velocity vector quantities. For motion is straight line with no reversals. The average speed and the average velocity are the same. All right, we're talking about the magnitude. Otherwise, they are not. Indeed, the average velocity of a round trip is zero. Um, as the total displacement is zero. So let's say your house is here and you go around the block. 
you know, maybe it was, I don't know, we'll say 10 meters here to get to, and then right here was 100 meters, another 100 meters, and then this right here was another 100 meters, and then this right here to be 90 meters. Well, your, um, the distance you traveled would be 10, 110, 210, 310, 400 meters. So your distance here is 400 meters, but your displacement is zero because here you went um, 10 meters, you went uh, to the right, then you went 100 meters up, you went 100 meters to the left, so you've this 10 meters and that and 10 of these 100 meters are starting to cancel out. You want 100 meters back down, so these two right here just cancel each other out because you want positive 100 and then negative 100, and then you want positive 90. So if that was negative 100, we said that was positive 90 and positive 10, your displacement here is zero. All right, so if we were to go back to this equation right here, the displacement on top would be zero. So your average velocity would be zero because you've not traveled in a straight line. You've gone in different directions. Different ways of visualizing uniform velocity. So uniform velocity means you're going the same speed and in the same direction. Well, what they're trying to show us here then is they're starting to head towards is we have this position, all right, and we use this position, which really confuses students. But this is really, position is the fancy word for saying just your displacement. Or actually, position is where you were. The, the difference between these two, notice the change in x right here, that is your displacement. It's also your distance. If you're going in the same direction, it's your displacement if you're going in the same direction the whole time. Your change of time, well, this would be time one, time two. So down here, your run, this, your displacement was your rise. Your run was the change in time. So you're getting delta t, or delta x, over delta t. Well, that's a change in position, or that is displacement, over change in time. And we've already learned that this delta x over delta t, or displacement over t time, is velocity. So in this case, your slope is velocity. So what I try to tell students in a position time graph, the slope is your velocity. And more specifically, it's probably your, not probably, it is your average velocity. Okay, this object's velocity is not uniform. Does it ever change direction, or is it just slowing, slowing down and speeding up? Well, again, remember, the slope of these lines, all right, the slope of these lines represent the speed, all right, its average velocity. So here we have a certain speed. This has zero slopes. So all this tells us, it doesn't tell us it's changing direction. It's gone from, let's say this set was one meter per second. This is a flat line, so that's zero meters per second. Here, let's say that is negative one. So what they're telling us here is that it's changing speed. Now, because it went down, we can determine that it's actually changing direction because this was positive and this was negative. So the fact that here it's just changing speed, here it's changing direction because of that negative tells us that it now all of a sudden is going the other direction. What would the speed be here again? Be ready to answer that. And then here, the speed is positive. So again, it changed direction again. OK, when it comes to the distance, the negative simply tells you which direction an object is moving. All right, be ready to answer that. Is that true or false? All right, distance time graph, slope equals speed. All right, well, in this case, what is the average speed of this object? I want to tell you that this is really easy right away. Up here we have y equals mx plus b. So this right here is our slope. Slope is speed. So what is the average speed? All right. Of this graph, this best fit line, all right, this best fit line here, the slope is the average speed. Um, so the average speed here is 0.2857 meters 
per second, 0.2857 meters per second. Where was this vehicle at the beginning of the experiment? Well, if you guys remember from algebra, the B over here tells us the starting point. So where was the vehicle at the beginning of the, exper at the experiment? It was at the 0.5893 meter mark. And the reason I know it's meters is because the y-axis is in meters. What is the instantaneous velocity of the object between 5 and 6 seconds? So this instantaneous word. So we're no longer going to use this equation because that equation deals with average. And that right there was the black line because that was our best fit line. The instantaneous is between, I want to use the light blue one, and now I just need to find the slope. This is an, a small, definite, small period of time, about one second. So this is 5 and 1.3. It's that ordered pair. And this right here is 6 and 1.5 approximately. I might be off a little bit. All right. So, all right, to find the slope, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, and I get 1.5 minus 1.3, and we get 6 minus 5. So I get 0.2 over 1, or 0.2 meters per second. And that right there is our answer to this, all right? What is the instantaneous velocity of the object between 5 and 6 seconds? 0.2 meters per second.